Hi, Odyssey Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror thriller movie named The Belko Experiment. Feel free to share your preferences for the types of movies you'd like to see more of in the comments section below. Bogota, Colombia. Mike Milch is driving to work on a busy street. A person in town comes up to his car and sells him a little sculpture made from an old corn cob. Mike decides to buy one from them. Mike gets to his workplace, Belco Industries. The COO, Barry Norris, arrives and sees armed guards checking IDs at the entrance. Local employees are told to leave. Inside, Mike sees other Belco employees who have been there for more than a year. He finds his girlfriend, Leandra Flores, who is going through a divorce. Leandra deals with constant unwanted attention from Wendell Dukes, who doesn't understand that she's not interested. Meanwhile, a new employee named Danny Wilkins is informed that the staff members all have trackers implanted in their heads. This is supposedly to prevent kidnappings, which are common in Colombia. Danny gets to know two other colleagues, Roberto Harace and Leota Heineck. Shortly after the workday begins, a strange voice comes over the intercom and announces that within eight hours, most of the employees will be dead. The voice instructs them that within 30 minutes, they must kill two people, or else more deaths will occur. The building is completely sealed off with metal covering all the doors and windows, causing everyone to feel nervous and tense. Barry tries to reassure everyone and dismisses it as a cruel prank. Maintenance workers Bud Melks and Lonnie Crane attempt to melt the metal with a blowtorch, but it proves to be too strong for the torch to have any effect. Danny, Roberto, Leota, and tech guy Keith McClure head to the roof and find cafeteria worker Marty Espenshide smoking a joint with two friends. While they discuss the situation, one of Marty's friends suddenly dies as the back of her head explodes. This shocks everyone, and then, back in the lobby, three more people die in the same way, causing panic among the remaining employees who think they're being shot at. Upon further investigation, the employees discover that the trackers in their heads are rigged to explode. Mike tries to remove his in the bathroom, but the voice warns him to stop or they'll detonate it remotely. Mike hesitates and eventually stops just in time, with Leandra pleading with him to cease. The voice then issues a serious ultimatum, the employees must kill 30 of their own within two hours, or else 60 will die. The employees grapple with their choices with some unable to bear the idea of killing others. Barry, however, is determined to make it home to his wife and kids, so he attempts to persuade security guard Evan Smith to give him the keys to the armory. Evan, having just witnessed the death of a fellow guard and friend due to the explosives, refuses to comply. In the basement, Lonnie is panicking while Bud attempts to calm him down. However, when Bud gets too close, Lonnie reacts impulsively and strikes Bud in the head with a wrench causing a fatal injury. Danny, who is hiding nearby, witnesses the incident. Lonnie then tries to prevent Danny from speaking out by grabbing her. In self-defense, Danny pushes herself away, causing Lonnie's head to collide with a metal bar, resulting in his death. Mike, Leandra, and Evan decide to separate, while Barry, Wendell, and Terry Winters team up to break into the armory using a blowtorch. Evan initially tries to intervene by brandishing his gun but eventually backs down and allows them to proceed. Before leaving with Leandra and Evan, Mike takes Evan's gun and shoots the blowtorch tank to prevent any further attempts to break into the armory. The trio reunites with Keith, Leota, and Roberto to craft signs intended to signal for help when hung from the building. However, guards stationed in the hangar spot them and open fire, injuring Keith in the hand. The voice then warns them to cease hanging the signs threatening to detonate their explosives if they continue. As Mike and his friends begin to descend the stairs, Barry suddenly strikes Mike in the head with a fire extinguisher, causing him injury. In the chaos, Wendell stabs Evan and forcibly takes his keys. Evan, wounded and bleeding, suffers as he succumbs to his injuries. Barry and his group retrieve the guns and begin coercing people to gather in the lobby as the deadline approaches, with less than 20 minutes remaining. They start sorting individuals based on whether they have children or if they are over 60 years old. After Mike regains consciousness, Barry and Wendell begin carrying out executions, with Terry closing in on Mike. However, Danny intervenes by cutting off the power in the basement. In the ensuing darkness, Barry, Wendell, and their associates start firing wildly while some employees manage to escape to safety. 
the voice announces over the intercom that time has run out and only 29 people have been killed. As a consequence, 31 more individuals, including Keith and Leota, have their heads exploded. In fear, everyone else hides. The voice then declares the start of the third round of their twisted game, stating that those with the highest kill count will be allowed to walk out free. Barry and Wendell, having the highest kill count so far, set out to increase their tally by indiscriminately targeting anyone they encounter. In a desperate attempt to save herself, one woman offers her body to Barry, but he callously twists her neck backwards. Barry boards an elevator while Danny and Roberto attempt to ascend from the top. Danny manages to exit from the top, but tragically, Roberto is crushed by the descending elevator, leaving Barry trapped inside. Danny climbs to the other side to escape. Leandra discovers Marty and his friend Chet in the cafeteria surrounded by numerous bodies. Marty and Chet have been removing the bombs from the heads of those who weren't killed by the explosions. Suddenly, Wendell arrives and begins shooting. Leandra takes cover behind a table with Marty and Chet, but they are tragically shot dead by Wendell. In a desperate act of self-defense, Leandra confronts Wendell and attacks him with an axe, repeatedly striking him in the face. Mike and Leandra manage to reunite and dodge an employee throwing Molotov cocktails, as well as Barry armed with a gun. Tragically, Barry shoots Danny in the head as she emerges from the elevator, and the Molotov thrower is also shot. Sadly, Leandra is fatally wounded and dies beside Mike. Fueled by rage, Mike confronts Barry, and they engage in a fierce fight. In a fit of desperation, Mike seizes a tape dispenser and relentlessly bashes Barry's head with it until he is incapacitated. Mike emerges as the sole survivor. Eventually, the guards arrive and pull him out from the scene. Mike is escorted into the hangar, where he comes face to face with the voice, a man bearing scars on his face. The voice explains to Mike that the entire ordeal was an experiment to study human behavior in extreme situations. In a daring move, Mike reveals that he has taken the bombs removed by Marty and planted them on the guards and the voice himself. Seizing the moment, Mike rushes to the control panel and detonates the bombs before swiftly dispatching two other goons with his gun. Despite the voice's attempts to dissuade him, Mike remains resolute and shoots the voice dead, ending the sinister experiment once and for all. As Mike exits the building, the camera widens to reveal multiple screens showing survivors from numerous other Belco companies who have endured similar ordeals. Suddenly, another voice announces the beginning of Phase 2, indicating that the sinister experiments are far from over. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.